If you watch Brian Stelter or Oliver Darcy on CNN, they will tell you that Fox News is horribly biased and misinforming their viewers. And perhaps they just they just don't understand why it is that people won't watch their network where you can get the real truth. Well, perhaps we now know Don Lemon in a now viral segment is laughing hysterically as his guests mock and belittle Trump supporters as essentially illiterate, degenerate hillbillies who can't find countries on maps and have complete disdain for elites who know how to read. I'm not exaggerating. That's actually what happened. You had three people on this panel at Don Lemon. You had Rick Wilson, who's, I guess, a never Trump or conservative, whatever. I don't know his deal. And he's basically doing this this uh, impression of a dumb hillbilly going like, you know, them elites and their fancy learning books. And that's that was his bit. Don Lemon, it's, it's not even that funny, to be honest. And Don Lemon's like laughing and like pounding on the desk or whatever. And then the other guy, Wajahad Ali, who's apparently like an opinion writer for The New York Times, jumps in too with this really feeble attempt at mocking Trump supporters. They call them credulous uh, boomer rubes. And he acts like they're all... I don't know, just dumb rednecks. This may have well may, may as well have been a campaign ad for Donald Trump to exemplify why working class Americans have complete disdain for the ivory tower class people like Don Lemon. So, so I find it hilarious when you look through the media reporters of CNN, when you look at their Twitter accounts and they're slamming Fox News. Let me tell you something, man. You want to know why people don't want to watch your network? It's because you're just awful people. You're just literal negativity, being mean and smearing them. Now, look, I'll tell you what. You turn on certain uh, uh, Fox News personalities and they will they will target certain people, politicians, you know, and certain types of like ideas. But this was a step beyond. Okay, a total step. Let's let's read the story. I want to show you a lot of I want to show you uh, some of these tweets from people. But I want to get to something else, too. Bill Maher. Okay. Famous liberal sitting down with Megyn Kelly, explaining that people will, what is, what is, he said something like, people will take it from the mouth of a werewolf if it's pushing back on political correctness. But I will tell you one more thing. This idea that Bill Maher said about how people are willing to vote for Trump, you know, if, if, they're willing, if he's willing to be that personality they like, it goes beyond just political correctness. It's this. When Don Lemon is laughing hysterically and insulting you and, and, and making fun of how stupid you are, I tell you what, there's going to be a lot of people who didn't vote for Trump who are going to be sitting there with a look on their face like this dude is a scumbag and they're going to go they're going to go vote for Trump to spite you. So I got this op ed from from The Washington Times breaking it down. They say Donald Don Lemon's disgusting on air mock of Trump. Yeah, it's Trump supporters, man. They say Don Lemon of CNN is more opinion than fact. Sure. But still busting out in a two minute fit of laughter as show panelists go on a mocking routine of President Trump is beneath even CNN. At least you'd think. Make way for the new standard of low at the cable outlet. Here's the hypocrisy. A lemon by a different employer, say Fox, would be on suspension right about now. Yep, absolutely. I love how CNN can complain about Fox News' bias and how they're not giving you the right information. But not only does CNN play the exact same game, they're totally on the left, even, and this is actually in the Bill Maher segment. Megyn Kelly points this out. CNN has become exactly what Trump accused them of being. This, this is insane. Don Lemon is not a newsman. He is just an angry anti-Trumper. And when he brings people on to insult the American people, yeah, his disdain is for the American people and he shows it. He said, uh, they write, in a skit with panelists Rick Wilson and Wajat Ali, CNN's lemon broke into uncontrollable laughter as discussions ensued about Secretary of State Mike Pompeo and his rebuke of NPR's Mary Louise Kelly over a Ukraine line of questioning. Wilson uh, referred to Pompeo's call for Kelly to locate Ukraine on a map and then added this bit. Pompeo also knows deep in his heart that Donald Trump couldn't find Ukraine on a map if you had the letter U and a picture of an actual physical crane next to it. One of the stupidest jokes I've ever heard. He says, "Q Q Lemon's laughter which wouldn't have have been all that notable, except Lemon went on and on and on and on. Donald Trump is the smart one and y'all elitists are dumb, Wilson said with a drawl, calling out Pompeo for playing to the boomer rube. From Ali, you elitists with your geography and your maps and your spelling. The clip continued. Lemon's laughter continued. The mocking of Trump and Trump supporters continued. And that's the eyebrow raiser. Poke fun of Trump, 
poke fun of Trump's team. But why poke fun and such arrogance and condescension and smugness of Trump supporters? Let me just let me let me tell you something. Don Lemon is trying his hardest to help Trump get reelected. That's the only thing I can see. What is he out of his mind? If you want to guarantee that people who voted for Trump double down and vote for him again, do what Don Lemon did. If you want to guarantee that independent voters who are not convinced are going to go and vote for Trump, do what Don Lemon did. If you want to guarantee that spiteful, angry, liberty minded individuals whose whole life philosophy is don't you tell me what to do or you can't tell me, you're guaranteeing that all of these people will go and vote for Trump to spite you, your smugness, your arrogance, your condescension. I tell you what, man, I certainly feel it. I would love to see a figurative pie in the face of Don Lemon over his arrogance about how much better he is than you. You ever see Dodgeball, the Globo Gym guys? If you're not familiar with the movie, it's like Ben Stiller is playing this super arrogant exercise guy for a gym. And the line is, at Globo Gym, we're better than you. And we know it. Don Lemon may as well have said, here at CNN, we're better than you. And we know it. And they all bust out laughing. Here's what happens next. Donald Trump tweets out the video saying, Don Lemon, the dumbest man on television with terrible ratings. And he links to the Daily Caller. It says, America, this is what CNN thinks of you. Don Lemon, his ratings, I, I, I'm going to be honest, they're not relatively terrible. I mean, CNN is doing bad. Lemon's ratings are down. But look, you compare their key demographic ratings and it is the worst. But it's not like, I, I don't, I'm, I'm not going to play a game where I'm like, haha, Don Lemon's show is collapsing. No, the ratings are down, but you know. So, I, I, okay, you know what? Maybe, maybe, maybe that's wrong. Maybe it is fine to say it's terrible ratings. Fine. I get more in the key demo than he does. Ha, take that CNN. But they do get tons of play on, on, on YouTube as well. So that's fair. Now, as for the dumbest man on television, hands down, Don Lemon won some award for like worst journalist in, in like 2014 or something. I can't remember when. And I also want to point out, as I love to, 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 to the media reporters of CNN, I just say this. If you want to rag on Sean Hannity's opinion, sure, go for it. I'm not a big Hannity fan. I'm not saying I hate the guy. I'm, you know, I'm fairly ambivalent. I try to be respectful as much as I can be. But Don Lemon once asked a panelist if a black hole could have swallowed the missing Malaysian airplane. And his panelists responded with, you know, a rear, you know, even a small black hole would swallow the whole universe. Yes, even a small black hole would swallow the whole universe. That's what she said. Don Lemon, why would you even ask the question? It was so dumb. And he goes, I know it's preposterous, but is it preposterous? That's CNN. That's what you get when you're in a hotel lobby or an airport. That's what you hear. Me, I'm not interested in that. That sounds like the dumbest man on television. Actually, I mean, I think it's fair to say maybe like Peter Griffin or whatever. But in nonfiction news reporting, I think Don Lemon takes the cake. Well, in response to Donald Trump tweeting this out, okay, first of all, I don't care if he's the president. He has a right to free speech too. He can tweet out whatever he wants, same as anybody. Well, Wajahat Ali is panicking. Oh, heavens, he says. He tweets, Trump tweeted our CNN clip from two days ago. Friends are now concerned about my safety. I refuse to be intimidated and bullied by bad faith actors who cry victimhood, whining about a harmless, silly 30 second clip while endorsing Trump, a cruel vulgarian who debases everyone. Ooh, this is my time to shine. You know why? I will not endorse Trump. I'm not a fan of his uh, rhetoric. And I specifically call him out when I do because of the way he speaks policy. Listen, when it comes to policy, there's a whole lot I don't know. So there are some things on foreign policy I will absolutely, you know, slam Trump over. I say it a million times. It's the obvious stuff. Yemen, Saudi Arabia, Syria, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Like the missile strike. That stuff for me is easy, right? In, on, on a morality basis. Economics, what can I really say? Trump's, Trump's hitting, the nail on, uh, hitting the nail on the head with the hammer with that one. But when it comes to Trump's attitude, when he uh, imitated body slamming a reporter, yeah. Yeah, I criticize the president for that. And guess what, Wajahat? I will also criticize you. So spare me your fake outrage calling Trump the bully when he called you out for being a bully. What's that? You went on CNN with Rick Wilson and Don Lemon and you insulted Americans. You made fun of them, treated them like they were stupid, condescending, arrogant behavior. What's happening now is that you thought you could just mock and belittle American citizens with impunity. 
You can't. You know why? Because these people have someone in their corner and his name is Donald Trump. And it's also true that, you know, he, they're, they're, they're both in the corner for each other. This is why people like Donald Trump. It's why many people who don't even like him still vote for him. Here's the way I described it a few days ago. Imagine you're in a schoolyard and there's and there's some bullies. And one bully says to you, if you got my back, I'm going to make sure the other bullies lay off. They're going to be like, sounds good to me. So when you go on TV and you insult them, guess what? The big guy in the room who's what, what is Trump like six foot five or something? He's right. He's a really tall guy. And he is kind of he's a big dude. He's, he's obese, actually, too. Uh, he's going to stand up and he's going to point and he's going to point in your direction. And guess what? That's called karma. You insulted people. Trump didn't single you out for no reason. And I'll tell you what, when Trump does, I've criticized him. He called Stormy horse face and stuff. You know, I've criticized him insulting people. Guess what? You can't pretend that the only people who are mad about what you said are the people endorsing Trump. No, it's not true. This is what I can't stand about AOC too, you know? Ocasio-Cortez always claims whenever she does something wrong, only Republicans are criticized. It's the GOP. It's like, no, it isn't, dude. There, look, look, I know the center is really small and frail at this point, but we exist. So I guess, you know what? I'll say this. Fine. Perhaps it's fair for Wajat to say, how are you going to criticize me and not criticize what Trump says if he's referring to most of the people who might do that? But in the end, that doesn't absolve you of your responsibilities. If you want to be a dick to people, to most Americans, like I'm, I'm telling you, man, listen, if you went on and said, I have a real concern with people choosing to support Donald Trump over these behaviors and these things. And I think we should have a real conversation about it. I would say much respect. You're, you're entitled to your opinion. I'm, I'm interested in hearing it. You didn't do that. You were just a mean and nasty dude. And now you're mad that guess what? President Trump showed everyone. You know, it's really funny about this tweet from Wajhat saying like, I will not be bullied. Oh, you're being bullied because you went on CNN and Trump told people you did. Trump, when Trump tweeted this out, he didn't say your name. He made fun of Don Lemon. He's not, he's not insulting you in any capacity. You, you are the one who did this to yourself. Now I'll tell you what I find so fascinating about this whole thing is what Bill Maher said back in 2016. What is this one? This one's 2020. Uh, check it out. He said, there will be blood. Maher sees civil war breaking out if we don't learn to live with each other. I'll tell you what's truly fascinating. How is it that we're at a point where Bill Maher, whose career, for the most part, has been insulting or mocking or making jokes about? Maybe it's, it's not fair to say insulting or mocking, but to make jokes about. He's a comedian and he's a political comedian. So he rags on Republicans all the time. And Bill Maher said in November he was going to tone things down and lay off on Trump and his supporters because he really does fear a civil war breaking out. Bill Maher said that. I mean, dude, his job is actually to be, well, to, to make jokes and to make fun of people. And he tends to point in one direction because he's a liberal guy. I think he's done a good job of calling out the insanity on the left, too. So I, I, I think Bill Maher's a, look, I like Bill Maher the same, for the same reason there are certain conservatives that I do like. People who absolutely will be critical and, be, and, and, and make jokes about the other side, but know where the line is and are willing to call out the BS. And I think a lot of people feel similar, similarly, you know, in, in that way about me, that we can all call out where the BS lies if the BS, you know, is, is, is apparent. So even the guy whose job is to make jokes will say, you know, I'm not going to do this. CNN didn't get the memo. CNN, they want this to happen. You know why? I think, I think CNN wants Trump to get reelected. I do. Because they want to run segments like this to rile up the resistance to drive their ratings. It's the Trump bump. They live on insulting Trump. What happens if Trump doesn't get reelected? If Trump loses, guess what? CNN's ratings are going to go down. So how can they simultaneously ensure Trump gets reelected and insult and, and, and belittle Trump and get that resistance, you know, rating those re, uh, resistance viewers? Exactly what, what Don Lemon just did. Insult Trump's base to such a degree that even people who never voted are going to be like, I really want to see that guy lose. And then... He gets to get the ratings from the resistance. He gets to get ratings from people like us who are, who are now going to watch the clip because, you know, it's it's like shocking and, 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 and just awful. And then Trump gets reelected off of it and he goes, oh, no, Trump got reelected. Aha. And then he gets a f another four years of the Trump bump. But I want to point this out. This is the other article I was going to show you. Bill Maher warns liberals not to hate Trump supporters. That way lies civil war. Incredible. Bill Maher. Much respect.
Now, I think Bill Maher has a, a, a touch of Trump derangement syndrome, certainly. I mean, there's a lot of things to criticize the president for. There's a lot of things to criticize basically every president for. And Trump certainly has his. But it's insane to me that, that, that I'll quote Nate Silver, liberals can't give Trump one good day. That to me is insane. OK, you can be moderate and say, listen, Trump's not my choice for president. There's a lot of things I don't like about him, but I understand why Trump supporters voted for him. It's, that's been my position the whole time. I'm not going to insult a Trump voter. It's, I, I, I try to listen to them and say, like, tell me why this was your choice. For me, I think I was lucky. You know why? When I was very much in the Bernie camp and I was very much hanging out with my lefty Democrat friends, you know, in like 2014 and 16, I had some good friends who were hardcore Bernie supporters who eventually flipped, flipped for Trump that, that coveted 12% of Bernie's base that actually voted for Trump. 12 to 18, depending on which study you look at. So I got to have friends who, who went through that. And I never did. I'm like, listen, man, you know, I'm not, I'm not somebody who ever votes for any party based on, you know, how I feel about the, the voters or how I feel about one party being good or evil or anything like that. I was like, Hillary's bad. I'm just not going to vote. I'm not, I'm, I'm fairly ambivalent, right? But I had some friends who became Trump supporters. And so I just asked them like, so, so why, why do you think that? Why do you feel that way? And then I met more people and I'm like, totally get it. Totally understand. And, it's, and it should be obvious to everybody when you watch CNN, why so many people were like, you know what? Give it to Trump. There are a lot of people who believed in Trump. They believe in his message, diehard supporters who will stand by him to the end. There are a lot of people who felt he was just better than Hillary. There are a lot of people who are concerned about political correctness and said, you know what? Everything else is, is you know, downstream, you know, politics is downstream from culture. Get the guy in who's going to defend, you know, a right to speech and, and, and push back on political correctness. You then had people who wanted to, you, you had some people who want to watch the world burn. I actually know some leftists who said they were voting for Trump because they were accelerationist. Their idea was that Trump would, would upset the establishment so much it would cause a complete collapse. And then they could come in and try and reform things. And I had some, uh, and I know some people who said, you know what, their their mentality, their politics, everything was swayed. I know people who used to be diehard Bernie Democratic socialists, and when they were pushed out and insulted and mocked and berated, they went and started talking to Trump supporters who explained their ideas. These people had not heard them before, and all of a sudden now they're like, I agree with you, Democrat to deplorable, I suppose. Some people actually had never been exposed to the ideas presented by Republicans, and when they were, they flipped. So you see a lot of people say, how could you abandon your politics? No, they just changed their opinions because they learned new things. Now, for me, I've always been, you know, as, as like a journalist, I've always listened and talked to people. So my, my politics have slightly moved a little to the center. I mean, actually, on the political compass, I've actually gone down and to the left a little bit. But uh, so like lefty libertarian. But policy wise, I've become, you know, fairly moderate. There's a lot of things, especially on like the Second Amendment, where I've definitely been swayed, not completely to like a lot of what the conservatives propose, but I've definitely pulled back from a lot of my positions on gun control stuff simply by, by having conversations and better understanding people. Here's the thing. Bill Maher is right. But how is it that Bill Maher can point this out and Don Lemon relishes in it? I think it's fair to say that, you know, Bill Maher is somebody who doesn't want to watch the world burn. He wants to figure things out. He does have TDS. You know, he's, he said a recession would be great because it would get rid of Trump. That's nuts. Bill Maher is far from perfect, but he can see something. And I think this shows there's some honesty, you know, in, in what he presents. He's saying straight up like, OK, we got to figure this one out. And, I, and, and he's going to try what he can to figure it out. I look at someone like Don Lemon as a sociopath. He doesn't know or care. He just wants to watch the world burn and extract whatever value he can from the system as it goes down in flames. So anyway, man, I'll wrap this one up. Uh, maybe Don Lemon just gave Donald Trump that campaign ad on purpose. Maybe he really wanted to ensure that that would go viral. And I'll tell you what, don't be surprised if that clip becomes a Trump campaign. And I'm not even kidding. I, I think Trump would be very, his team, you know, Brad Parscale and others would be smart to just take that clip of them mocking Americans about how stupid they are. And, and, and you know, these people, they are, they're the ones who are so separate from the rest of us, sitting atop their ivory tower in their elite cultural, you know, safe space. And they don't care. They feel untouchable, that they can mock people with impunity. Well, I'll tell you what, man, things are changing. Thanks to the internet. Wajahat Ali just got a dose of what it's really like when you, a New York Times contributor, and you know, one of the people sitting atop this establishment ivory tower, actually get someone coming out and pointing the finger at you. I love it. 
Look, man, if you want to go on national television and insult half the country, don't be surprised when the president, who you insulted his supporters, points at it and says, hey, everybody, look at this. You're mad that you did a high profile panel where you acted like a fool. Sorry, that's your fault. And you reap what you sow. It's called karma. Stick around. Next segment's coming up at 1 p.m. on this channel, and I will see you all then.